Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to the garage. And in a not too distant past, I talked about Stanley Plains and industrial arts and a few things like that. And I showed you some of the abuse and torture that some of these fine tools uh, had been uh, inflicted upon. But today I want to confine the subject to the totes. The tote, of course, is the handle. You may not know it by that word, but for many years, for a, for a century, all of these wonderful totes on Stanley planes, this is, these are number fives, all number fives, corrugated, they were made of rosewood, which was an imported wood. It was very hard, very beautiful, very durable, but, you know, it's still wood. I had been told Note that's stamp number 20 from the industrial art shop, as is that, so they could keep all the parts together. Otherwise, the kids would swap them around and, uh, and get the better pieces. This one's been uh, damaged, of course. Low knob, low knob. Some, these have the high knob. And it's not the purpose of this uh, to be a type study. Before I was so rudely interrupted by my wife opening the garage door and scared the heck out of me as well. She just drove up in the car. Anyway, uh, forgot where I was. All right, I'm really getting eventually here to talking about making aluminum totes. And can you do this at home? Why would you want to? But let's talk again about uh, the totes. I had been told that when you go to an auction, you're going to see so many of these that are broken off like this. And someone once told me that carpenters got a blister in the webbing there of their hand and they would knock that off. I don't know if that's true or not, but I sure see a lot of them that are broken over the years. Well, this wood got too expensive uh, and uh, I think that they could no longer import it because of it. it was an endangered species. Those were probably very old trees. Stanley used to uh, import an awful lot of woods, including boxwood, for their rulers. Well, eventually several things happened. Number one, Stanley started making them out of cheap wood, and notice they lack some of the contouring. They just aren't pretty at all. Also note that on these three in a row here, they are not even marked Stanley. I believe them to be Stanley, but I believe Stanley was too ashamed to put their name on them. Boy, look at the wear in there. My gosh. Not sure if that shows up. But also what Stanley did at one time was, oh, we got a better idea. I better show you this one first. We'll just make plastic handles. People will love them, and we can cut the cost, and they'll never break. That's also one of those cheap Stanley planes. These are probably from the 70s, maybe 80s, I'm not sure. But, of course, they did break. And then the screw was bent, so, you know, just all kinds of nasty things happening during that time. Also, if you look, well, I wasn't going to go this far, but, you know, that's just a piece of stamp junk, you know, and it's all bent. And they no longer put the little uh, disc on their separate piece. And this was a, no, this is, this is still one piece. But in the far past, they were two separate pieces, mortars together. Holy miracle. Okay. All right, I'm done showing you what typically happened in a school shop over a period of time. And kids weren't always totally reckless. It's just the nature of children to wreck everything that they touch. And those of you that have raised children know that they can de totally destroy, destroy a house and a car. I was one of them. This one was a prop from the Blue Man Group, but it's also one of those cheaper Stanley planes, but I want to talk about these planes with the aluminum totes. And these were probably sold only in school shop catalogs, of which there were about three or four. And they were sometimes called the school shop special. 
and I think you could buy the handles as replacement handles, but of course you could, you could buy the uh, wooden ones as replacement handles too, but eventually not out of the beautiful rosewood. All right, so look at these. That's marked Stanley, made in USA. So I have two of those, and they're in perfect shape. I don't know how old they are, but here's yet another one that is not Mark Stanley. I don't know if it was made by Stanley or a supplier or somebody that was wanting to do exactly what I'm doing in this video. And now we're at the end of the introduction, finally, and I can get... Uh, uh, all right, somebody always will put in the comments, he doesn't actually talk about anything on 12.02, you know. They're, they're, they're just brutal on me, but... Uh, let's go down the basement now, and I'll show you what I've been doing over the last couple days. And I'm not sure why I'm doing it. I have no idea other than this is an idea that I have had for probably 20 years. And uh, never did anything with it, and I was a wiser and a smarter man, man back then than what I am now. So, I, I, all right, let's go in the basement. Oh, is it hot out. It's July 1st, and I'm glad to be back down in the basement where it's quite cool and dry with my new dehumidifier. All right, here's what I'm doing now. I would like to make a pattern and then cast up some of these handles. I don't know why. I'm not a woodworker. It's just a challenge is what it is, and it may be an ill-fated one. So. I've done some research and planning in, in this one, and, and this won't be easy. And part of the problem is that we have a hole that is at an angle. Now, it'd be virtually impossible to drill that hole at the right angle in a finished casting. So I'm going to employ a core, and that is what makes it so complicated. And it has to be a split pattern, and there has to be a, a core to lay into the sand mold. I think you know from watching my foundry videos what a core is. So again, there's a broken tote. Rosewood. And these will fit on a F Stanley 5, 6, 7, and I think 8. I believe the 4 doesn't have this hole right here. I'm not real sure on that. I forgot. And it doesn't matter. So that's what I'm going to make. All right. How am I going to do that? And I spent a lot of time thinking about it. But here's what I came up with. And I have many still pictures that I'm going to show on uh, at the end of the video. Because this... I've already been working two days on this. And I probably have eight or ten hours in on this already. It's just incredibly time-consuming. This would be uh, have been a great project for 3D printing, but it's just so entirely irregular you'd have to be a genius in Confusions 360 to do that. This is a little less than an inch thick, and I'm using this beautiful walnut here as a pattern simply because it happens to be about the right thickness. It's half inch thick. Matter of fact, I'm going to Menards in a few minutes and see if I can buy some decent half-inch wood for pattern making because we know that's junk. But what I did on this is I started by milling a oh, quarter inch, yeah, quarter inch half uh, round groove. And then, and take a look at those pictures. <clears throat> I had to make some core prints here. That's quarter inch aluminum milled in half. It could have gone all the way through one end to the other. I'm not going to tell you why I did not do that. And I won't go through all of the, the effort here of, of trying to explain a split pattern and the need for it. But this all has a three degree taper on it so it will withdraw from the sand. Perhaps you can see the taper there. 
Now I didn't go to the effort of, of curving this and the original is looking the radius gauge it's it's half inch more or less radius and I thought about trying to use a rounding over bit but that's the wrong size but you know that wouldn't be easy either so rather than spend a lot of time trying to do that I just broke the corners with a file because this is just an exploratory pattern it's going to be way too ugly I mean this is ugly as heck isn't it I mean compared to this it, it's absolutely uh, yeah it's terrible I know it but I'm doing research <laughs> so I went out in the July sun in my garage and made a casting using that pattern and there's the core I still have the gate and the sprue on there so I'm going to cut that off right now and then we'll see if it, we can remove this core so the core is made from I don't have a piece here it's out in the garage it's not solid it is one quarter inch tubing do I have a piece here? no I do not quarter inch aluminum tubing filled with sand and then about a sixteenth inch wire ran in there I didn't want to use steel brake line would have been good for that but I wanted it easy to run a drill through there to clean it up and remember also that on this end I have to counter bore it and then a hole of course to be drilled there so let me step over to the bandsaw real quickly and I'm going to cut off that that and that although that could be cut off with a side cutter even can you see the sand and the wire in it be back momentarily well let's see if I can drill the sand out of the core that shouldn't take much I wouldn't think Probably ruined a bit. Well, now with a quarter inch long bit, I'm going to attempt to drill it out, and I'm hoping that the drill truly follows the core without deflecting. Because I still have, remember, that's aluminum now, the core. I was going to use brass, but one time I used some brass tubing, and believe it or not, it melted when <laughs> the metal was poured in. You wouldn't think that could happen, but it did. Okay, I guess that I proved that the concept of the core is usable and okay. So I'm happy to know that. At least that part of this grand experiment was a success. Well, I think you all know that Stanley's threads, all of the threads they use here are proprietary. And I don't know if they did that to be ornery or if that just goes back before they had standardized things. but. Uh, even a stud like this you, you can't really make because of it's an oddball thread you'd have to make the taps or dies maybe they're available I doubt it all right let's see if this goes on and if the angle is correct because some of this layout that I did was bagas and bagash and and I'll be darned it does fit I know it's ugly what are you gonna do but maybe that's the way they ought to be made that would be student proof, wouldn't it? Of course, you would have to make about a 5 16 rod there and a 5 16 bolt here, and then it would be student proof. Well, what I'm going to do now is off camera, I'm going to dress this off square just on a belt sander or that nice disc sander that I bought at the same time that I bought all of these planes. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time with this and I certainly am not going to attempt to round it over like this alright I got to go to Menards and I got to go to Horror Freight to try to get some rubber gloves but not rubber 
Yes, rubber gloves to protect me from the virus, but actually rubber gloves, I like to use them when I'm doing my molding and casting. See how clean my hands are because I wore those blue gloves, but I, I'm thinking they might be out of it because of, of the, the flu. Might be out of the gloves, I mean, but I'll be back in a couple hours and uh, continue this, this. This video is about half over. All right, I'm back, and by the way, this is the core. Quarter-inch aluminum tubing filled with sand with a piece of wire in there so that in case the aluminum would melt, it wouldn't sag. That's, that's why I have the wire in there, but it didn't. And it worked just fine. All right, I'm back, as I said, and I have uh, drilled a hole here, counterboard, and I got it in place. And actually that would serve now uglier than heck. But if you had every plane in the school shop equipped like that, the kids wouldn't know the difference, would they? Possibly not quite as comfy because it's not rounded off. Certainly not pretty, not even as pretty as this one. I think I'll take the time now to round this just a little bit in one area. Because I'm not sure I'm going to proceed with this much further. And Horror Freight did not have... The rubber gloves, plus they made me wear a mask while I was in there. Then I went to Menards, and I'm thinking about pattern making wood. And, you know, they don't, you guys in Europe will love this, but, you know, I couldn't really get half inch. It's 12 millimeter, which is fairly close. And then the Aspen wood and other softer woods they had, it said uh, half inch, but it wasn't half inch. It was a nominal size. This is too thick, as I said, about an eighth of an inch or 3 second too thick. But remember this is just an experiment. Let me take this off and see just how difficult it would be to, to round that a bit. Now I'm in the process of making with my friends up at Lumatank a 2 by 72 inch knife makers belt sander like Jeremy Schmidt is making. So watch for that video if I ever get that done. Also, if I was to ever redo this, I would change the angle on my pattern by about one or two degrees. Is there just a little bit of uh, misalignment there? But then again, that may vary from Stanley Plane to Stanley Plane. I also milled that down, as you can see here on the original one and somewhat the same on this one. Be right back. I made a little progress, very little, and I used a file far more effectively, a big double cut file. And that's about 15 minutes work and I'm breathing hard. And of course the whole idea is to make the contour on the pattern, not having to shape it in the final form, but again experiment as it is, but that's, that would look fairly good. Hair too thick, as I said. Let's put it back on and this will really be the conclusion of this episode. Here's an alternate way of doing it, but I didn't really want to do it, but I have two of these, two that say Stanley and two that are unmarked, but I had considered clamping it and milling it in half, reducing half to chips, and then take the other one so I'd have a right and a left, and reducing that also and making the pattern that way. These may have some value for collectors, so I was hesitant to do that, and that would be no small job either. And then if I got that done and the two castings that I used were not really identical, maybe made at different times or different patterns, perhaps they wouldn't match up and I would have destroyed a couple of good totes. So that's why I didn't do that. Some of you are probably thinking, why not? And that way I would have had a perfect uh, core print at the right angle and all of that too. So that is something that I considered while I was sleepless in Freattle. 
Well, there it goes. Student proof aluminum handle in its roughest form, conceptual form. The pattern, and this was really all about making patterns and castings. Not so much the finished plane because nobody uses those anymore except a few really good woodworkers, but they don't even do it in school, so the point is moot. But I thought maybe you would enjoy it. I had fun doing this, although I don't have the heart to continue it anymore. <laughs> so this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time. You got four of them. One of all four of them right in there. Okay. Take the power. What's your number? Number 30. Is there four of them, George? Okay. Well, we got one of them. Hey, he's fine.